In this episode, one of the most brutal shark attacks ever recorded in human history. This horrifying attack occurred just off the coast at Wiseman's Beach in Peak Bay, South Australia. But what happened and why did the sharks attack? This and other questions will be answered in the video. Welcome to Wild Assault. Peak Bay, South Australia's Port Lincoln with its peaceful landscape of wooded islands, breathtaking coastline cliffs, and pockets of quiet white sand beaches. It's no surprise that the port is one of Australia's most popular tourist destinations for both adventurers and vacationers. Wiseman's Beach, on the other hand, is a much more remote location that resembles a vast lagoon. And there's also a prime fishing location for those with a preference for a quieter, more remote experience at the bay. To further add to its marvel, the coastal region's ecosystem teams with a variety of unique wildlife ranging from marsupials such as gray kangaroos to reptiles like tiger snakes, the coast furthermore features a variety of aquatic creatures ranging from marine mammals such as sea lions and fur seals to some of the most dangerous animals on the planet. A list that includes the visually captivating yet notoriously deadly box jellyfish and of course the breathtaking butt. Globally feared great white shark, famous for the once in a lifetime experience which it offers thrill seekers of cage diving with great white sharks. These waters have been confirmed to host one of the largest populations of these magnificent and ancient apex predators. Despite the potential risks and dangers they may pose to humans in a close encounter, the fact of the matter was, and still remains, that shark attacks were extremely rare occurrences at Peak Bay. And when it comes to shark attacks on humans, when you look at it from a worldwide annual statistical basis, there are on average only 70 recorded shark attacks on humans per year, and only a fraction of these result in loss of life. And given the fact that there are so far 480 known species of sharks consisting of a mostly healthy population, this is actually a relatively small number of incidents. In fact, since the year that this attack took place, a shark attack had resulted in a human fatality in these waters for nine straight years. When in January of 1974, 26-year-old Terry Manuel was killed and eaten by a great white that viciously attacked him during his ascent from an abalone dove. Having recently migrated from a rural Australian town, Shirley entered and her husband Barry, and their four children decided to move to Wiseman's Beach due to very severe allergies to farm life. The move was furthermore a no-brainer for the couple as they, like many other people, had considered living by the beach to be one of their longtime dreams. On March 3, red of 1985, the family had decided to hit the beach for the afternoon with a good friend of Shirley and Barry's Keith Coventry as they situated themselves on the beach. The trio of adults spontaneously decided that they would go snorkeling for some scallops after ensuring the kids were settled down at the beach. Shirley and Barry informed the kids that they won't be too long, nor will they be too far offshore. The children were already far too engaged in their beach games, nonchalant to respond with quick and attentive nods and rushed goodbyes. Unaware, of course, of the horrors soon to come after collecting their scallops, Barry and Keith head to shore and patiently wait for Shirley to finish scanning the sea bottom. The two men get lost in conversation and joke with one another and the kids bragging about who managed to collect more scallops than the other. Meanwhile, Shirley is still snorkeling, mesmerized by the sights and overall experience of the bay offered suddenly as if one were snapping out of a trance. Shirley realizes she's collected way more scallops than she'd originally intended to, which is when she began to slowly turn her body and head back to shore toward the family. An approximately 22-foot and highly famished great white shark emerges out of the depths of the deep blue sea. It began scanning for movements with its jet black eyes and remarkable hearing ability which allows it to sense low-frequency vibrations in the water, such as that of a wounded fish, which upon detection would instantly set off its curiosity to its maximum capacity. 
Given the animal's level of hunger, it's important to note that there are two kinds of shark attacks. In other words, there are two primary ways that shark attacks are categorized. The first kind is a provoked attack. And yes, there have been several documented instances where humans have provoked sharks and then unsurprisingly attacked as a result. And then there's the second kind, which are known as unprovoked attacks. In this circumstance, the shark attacks a human out of curiosity, or in rare cases, with the intention to consume the great white continues to swim in Shirley's direction as it desperately scans the water for movement. And as it got closer and closer, it finally spots a figure splashing and swimming near the surface. The shark locks its sights on Shirley as she swims slowly towards Barry, Keith and the family blatantly unaware of the impending danger. In a scene straight out of a horror movie, the shark takes aim and preaches powerfully, launching Shirley several feet in the air with her torso waist deep in its jaws. The beast lands on the water with a big splash, clamping its jaws down even harder to secure its grip on her body as it landed, crushing helpless Shirley's torso with its immense bite force and begins viciously shaking his head from side to side. Technique which most sharks use the commonly ripped limbs, thick blubber and flesh off of their prey. The water around Shirley now turns blood red. The men and the kids who at this point are frozen from shock, watched helplessly as the beast continued its rampage on poor Shirley. Barry suddenly snaps out of this frozen state and attempts to jump into the water to try to save his dying wife. For he was instantly held back by his friend Keith and the kids as it was clearly nothing he could have done to save her. And as everyone was holding him back, Barry begins yelling hysterically, she's gone, she's gone. As the men and the kids stood helplessly, watching Shirley's torso floating in the water face down to their shock and horror, they noticed that the shark had bitten her clean in half from the waist down and the scene straight out of a Hollywood movie, the great white, then suddenly returns and in front of the eyes of her traumatized family bites, Shirley's head hanging off of her body and swiftly turns towards the horizon and swims off into the ocean, death. The horror, however, does not end here. Various reports from the scene of the attack indicated that rescuers had attempted to retrieve what remained of Shirley from the water, but were never able to find her body. Despite days of intense search efforts to help salvage at least the piece of Shirley and for her family, there was no sign of her torso at the scene of the attack or around the vicinity whatsoever, and the search eventually had to be called off. It was later presumed the Great White had returned to Shirley's body for a third and final time to finish what remained of her once and for all, leaving burying the children with nothing but memories of the woman they all loved the most.